Viva a África! Viva! Viva o socialismo! Viva! Viva o pan-africanismo! Viva! 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 National Jurisdictional Council of the Milka Cabral African Youth, which is we call JAP, Juventude Africana Milka Cabral. It's, uh, it's the youth wing of the African Party of Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde which was started with the name of uh, African Party of Independence. Of Independence. Amir Kakabral was uh, physically assassinated when he was 48 years old. The following year, the same year, the PIC unilaterally proclaimed independence. It waged a people's armed struggle, a struggle of the people, by the people, for the people. And they, recre they created the Republic of Guinea-Bissau and then also helped to contribute to the Republic of Cape Verde, Republic of Angola, Republic of Mozambique, and Republic of Santa Tome and Principal. And they coordinated their own struggle together. So on the 50th anniversary of Cabral's death, uh, physical disappearance, 600 youth of the party went to the place where independence was proclaimed, Medina de Boy, and they created a Milcock Cabral African Youth. They said, you think you killed Cabral? We got many Cabrals here. And so this comrade was here today. He's one of those uh, Amir Kakabras. And as you heard him say earlier, he also was, was sent abroad to study so he could defend our, our rights of our natural resources. He's uh, a member of the PIDC, was one of the children and the uh, pioneers of the PIDC. So he's also a lawyer in international affairs, Comrade Lamin C.C. Jr. Falar um bocado sobre juventude e panafricanismo. We have been asked to talk about the topic of uh, youth and panafricanism. Mas antes de não aprofundar qualquer coisa, não me esteja falando um bocadinho de experiência que não tem de juventude africana em Milcar Cabral como sendo estrutura jovem de um dos maiores partidos de África. Uh, to help to introduce ourselves to this topic, we want to talk a little bit about the Pan-African Youth Organization of the PIC, which is called the Milka Cabral African Youth Jack. The Asians say that uh, some people wait for luck to come by. But uh, if you really want to have luck, you must go where that luck is. In other words, you have to go look for it. And just recently, the Milka Cabral African Youth, Jack, just organized a second Congress. And now, the second Congress that is to say the reason why I use the word luck is because um, in the statutes of the Amir Kakabral African Youth, they're supposed to have congresses every four years. But there were many factors that we don't want to mention here that blocked them from having congresses. And only 34 years later did they actually organize a congress. But it wasn't by luck. It was comrades like himself who went and struggled to organize an organized commission to implant structures everywhere and to organize this congress. So they went to go get the luck. All the juvenile. Na Guiné-Bissau, bem mais estruturado, 
bem mais organizado e bem mais dinâmico. O primeiro é que se tu da tua dirigente e dizes praticamente que mama lite de princípios revolucionários e também entende princípios de panafricanismo que não leem na papel que não líderes imortais como Amilcar, como Amilcurma, Seco Touré, Yomu Kenyatta, Antônio Agostinho Neto, etc, etc, escrevi Bahia na época também que eles eram jovens. Uh, the, 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 the structures of this organization is the best organization for youth throughout the whole country, Guinea-Bissau. It has the best structures, it has the best, most conscious revolutionary youth. And the reason is because those who formed the part of the organizing commission and those who took leadership as who democratically, democratically assumed leadership positions in Jack are those youth who have re revolutionary consciousness because they were able to breastfeed on the revolutionary principles and ideas of the PIDC and a milk cocker about thought. But you don't know about Congress, no concern in the Assembly of the Basi, no way conference in the section, conference in the sector, conference in the regional, at the Congress, the structure of the juvenile the PIDC. And you don't know about the Congress, no way the circa of 54 mil jovens formalmente inscrito e aderente nessa estrutura juvenil. A OSS nós estamos com mais de 60 mil para um país que mais de metade e jovem, mas não atinge na sua totalidade 2 milhões de habitantes. When the organizing commission began to organize structures in the villages and in the neighborhoods, they were able to organize structures at the level of the basis. That's to say where the youth are, where they work, where they go to school, where they live, wherever the youth are, they went to where they work. And they were able to organize base structures, 2,623 2, 2, bases that organized, but not mobilized, 54,000 youth inside <coughs> their structures before they went into the Congress. After the Congress, the best of those youth took leadership positions democratically, and now they have recruited more than 70,000 youth inside of this organization. And so, just to make the American, the American structure uma estrutura altamente organizada. And this is why. Why is conscious youth inside of this permanent organization? Não por dar exemplo, nem cinco dedos que fazem parte do nome. Então, se não houver qualquer que seja combate, é um dedo só se impacto naquilo guerra, naquilo combate, é por ser insignificante. Mas se não junta tudo de uma forma organizada, não tem ele nem posicionamento. Para aquele impacto que não tem e por ser bem mais forte de que agora que não tem no dedo desorganizado não bater sobre aquele problema. We can use the example of our hand. If we want to go into combat, into battle, if we want to battle with one hand, one finger, we will not win. If we try to battle with our fingers disorganized, we not, we will not win. But if we organize those fingers, we will have unity, we have power, we will win. Então, as o nome de juventude e panafricanismo primeiro so we want to reiterate that we talk about youth and the Pan-African Revolution. The first thing we must talk about is having the most conscious youth organized into tightly, uh, tightly knitted structures. Independent of the organization, we have been able to do the in front. We have to see that the objective is also to achieve and this youth must know clearly what the objective is we want to achieve. They have to have conscience of this objective so they will embrace this objective and be willing to make all types of sacrifices so they can achieve this objective. So we have to types of organizations that we don't understand how it exists or how it exists in any society, tanto in society of Ghanese, na sociedade guineense, na sociedade sul-africana e muitas outras sociedades africanas. E de como, primeiro, não tem aqui organizações espontâneas. Adioc. I mentioned organization, I want to reiterate it, but I want to talk about the types of organization. You could have organizations in any society, here in Ghana, in uh, Nigeria, in Guinea-Bissau, in South Africa, <coughs> and other, other words. But what type of organization is best for you? You could have a spontaneous organization 
where it, it rises up to just achieve a spontaneous objective. For example, lights, you don't have electricity for a few days, so let's go do a protest. The electricity company, you get lights again, and so the organization dissolves. Então, por ter também aquilo, organizações tipo movimentos. Você veria como e por existir para lutar contra um certo tipo de objetivo. Este também é um outro tipo de organização que pode existir. You can also have an organization called movements, like we had in Africa, many movements and, uh, against this, movement against apartheid, movement against that other thing. But with the movement, it doesn't have a common ideology. It only has a common enemy. Once you get rid of that common enemy, that movement can now take different directions or even divide or disappear. E não tem terceiro, terceiro do que organizações de partidos políticos. E dentro de que organização de partidos políticos, não tem vários tipos. You have another type of organization in our country, which is more tightly and highly organized, political parties. But political parties, you have different types of political parties that I want to talk about. Então, não tem aquele partidos políticos elitários. Delite. Ou seja, que os burgueses entendem de como eles que têm a tendência de dirigir partidos políticos. You can have uh, elite parties. These elite parties will be led by those few bourgeoisie or petty bourgeoisie who think that they are clearer than everybody else and they will, they will organize the party themselves without the masses. Não tem também aqueles partidos políticos ditos de vanguarda. Tem que falar de uma aqueles gentes mais conscientes que por sair da universidade ou mais inteligentes eles que dirigem dirigir o partido político dirigir a sociedade massa na pedra só se atrás. You have another type of party called the Vanguard Party, where those who consider themselves to be more conscious are the ones who will say they're going to organize the masses because they know more than the masses. People, for example, uh, students at university or college professors or those who graduated, they consider themselves to be more conscious, and so they say they can lead the society, and they would like for the people to follow behind them like sheep follow behind a shepherd. E por último, não tem que terceiro tipo de partido político. Tem revolucionário de massa. Não quero dizer isso, mas talvez não estudo de que lado não pertence. You also have the popular parties where you have the masses in there, but the decisions come from the top, they're imposed upon the masses. And the masses have to follow decisions in the name of di party discipline that were made by the leadership. But you have the mass revolutionary party <coughs> where the masses themselves are in all the structures. Every social layer is organized in the party, from the children to the workers to the farmers to the, to the intelligence, everybody's in this party. And don't assist entendido de como a segunda teoria pan-africanista que deve dirigir a sociedade. In our opinion, and we think you might share this, the, the most appropriate organization for the pan-africanist revolution is the mass revolutionary party, where the masses themselves are inside of the structures of this party and are the ones who organize it, the society. So that is Abocado, eu tenho uma conversa na conferência e falaram de teorias de não líderes. Ele ora assim. Hoje eu falei de como alguns, eu falei de como eles estão de ultrapassado aos no estágio que o mundo está nem nunca pude acompanhar de mais essas ideias. Mas então fica triste para ver de que, para ver o que eles não definem até agora. A nós ainda nunca atingindo aquele método. When we began today's seminar, uh, I was touched to hear some people saying that some people think that some of the ideas of some of our immortal leaders have uh, uh, outdated. In our opinion, this is out of touch because ideas never die. Ideas are eternal. And we know that once you have the correct ideas, you have to put them in practice. You can't say now that it was not successful because you haven't finished it. You've got to continue the work behind those permanent ideas. But very it's very simple. I also pegue on theory a livro de Kwame Nkrumah. Se eu pego um dizer da Milka Cabral, eu pego um dizer de Américia Sepultura, de, de Antônio Agostinho Neto, de Júlio Nyerere, de uh, e outros outros líderes panafricanistas, <coughs> eles tudo é que é um consenso de como a nós em si não tem que ter 
no more to the production. If you look at example of these permanent ideas that we're speaking about, you look at the ideas that have been defended by Mirka Cabral, Secretary Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nair, and many other revolutionaries, they say that, this, that the objective is for the people to control the modes of production. How can that become outdated? It tells us that we have to the production. Because if we have to do it, we have to do it for a country in Africa, to see the PIB, the recursos naturais supera PIB da Europa que dos Estados Unidos e mesmo assim que um país da África tem mais de que 90% de sua população desempregada. Just to give you a quick example of what we mean, we say we don't control the means of the modes of production. You could have a, a, a geographical area in Africa that has the same gross national product as a geographical area in Europe. But how can you now say that the people control the most of production when 90% of the people inside that area are unemployed? And so that significa de kuma kil ideas, kil theories, kil prácticas que no líderes inmortales te defiende banam y contra pasar al final no ca tingir na y no precisa de tingir. And so na tingir só na base de organização, principalmente organização juvenil. Por bem de que e capaz de que quem fala banana não é por meio fala. A nós e maioria de população africana. Nós estamos acima de 55%. Se estando acima de 55%, a nós também não é diferente com um idoso. Naquele sentido, a nós não tem ainda força de ir atrás de que o nome mexe para não conseguir. E um idoso pode ter que força. Just these facts alone reveal to the fact that uh, we still have a lot of work to do and that these comrades who. who propagated these ideas were correct. We haven't achieved these, these ideas yet. We haven't achieved the control of motor production. That's up for us to get, up for us to achieve. And the, the most important social layer to achieve this objective is to organize youth of Africa. We must be organized into the youth wings of the political parties, must be organized, coordinate our struggle together with the parties that we form a part of so that we can have political, military coordination of Africa. Eles é deixar no tudo, mas tudo que for necessário para nós só não sumir no destino. Mas até agora, não quero conseguir facilitar. <coughs> mas nós não entendemos como um dos principais obstáculos, no que sentido? Primeiro, falta de união. Segundo, até agora ainda não quer definir forma de organização que há no nível de ter para não tomar conta de não modo de produção ali na África. So that our great immortal organizers, whose names we have mentioned previously, have left us with the legacy and all the instruments necessary to achieve, to achieve our objective. But the reason why we haven't achieved the objective yet is because of the lack of consciousness of those of us who have not uh, looked at these ideas, to follow these ideas, and not take, done the work to organize ourselves so we can achieve this objective. Na verdade, conferências de tipo tem organizado mais vezes na África. Porque a mim como sendo de Guiné-Bissau, para mim vim até conferência, como de cada pensamento juvenil de um jovem de África do Sul, cada pensamento juvenil de um jovem de Nigéria, cada pensamento juvenil de um jovem de Tanzânia, cada pensamento juvenil de um jovem de outras partes da África. Para mim, ele é mais de um agregado em termos de experiência para potencializar o nível revolucionário para ter o mais impacto possível na nossa sociedade africana. To achieve this sacred objective, we have to have unity. Everybody says it all the time. But to have unity, it presupposes, as Kwame Nkrumah said, organization. Without organization, you can never have unity. This conference has really inspired me, which is why I reiterate that these type of conferences must happen everywhere all the time, not just every once in a while. I came from Guinea-Bissau, and now I'm here together exchange ideas with my brothers and sisters out of Azada, South Africa, out of uh, Ghana, and different parts of the world. So now we discover we have the same interests. <laughs> É muito simples e para que não complique a coisa, para não entender de como a nossa juventude não pode tudo. 
no tiene fuerza, mas no puede todo. Entonces, legados de chave, ¿qué legados? Basta solo no pegar la, no tiene como ser un punto de partida para transformar en actual situación crítica que África tiene estado en la vida. So the solution is simple, but at the same time it's difficult, but it's simple. Because the legacy has been left behind, now it's our job to embrace these concepts, these philosophies, these principles, and put them to practice on a day-to-day -day basis, and we will achieve this objective. Now we have a pamphlet to read, and we have a pamphlet to read, and we have a pamphlet to read. It's a pamphlet, and it's some strategies that come from the 5th Congress Pan-Africanista. Então, se tu não usas como ser o ponto de partida, camada juvenil, não pode resolver manga de problemas nada. Our responsibility is to take these ideas to the youth wherever they are. So I want to give you an example of what we've been doing in Guinea-Bissau. In the PIDC's Emil Cacabral Political Ideological School, we study Pan-Africanism. But we decided to take those concepts and put it into a simple brochure to reproduce, to give to the masses of youth wherever they are. Mm -hmm. We'd like to encourage you to do the, the same thing. Take these revolutionary ideas to the masses of the youth wherever they are so that they can embrace these ideas and want to follow up, uh, be a part of the organization. This is fractioned in five objectives, but not necessarily in the world of the because it takes a lot of time. But the first one is the total liberation of Africa and the union and the unification of Africa na base de um socialismo científico. Essa imagem que prática. We have taken the ideas promoted by our immortal leaders and tried to simplify it. Let them know the objective is simple. Africa must be totally liberated. Africa must be unified as one, and Africa must be socialist. That's the objective. Terceiro, para ter falar de tipos de partidos que existem, por exemplo, de partido revolucionário como sendo um modelo que não lhe decide para trazer uma sociedade. Este também é bem como sendo um dos documentos estratégicos de que ele quinto congresso. Going back to what I said earlier, it's the second point we have here, the third point we have here, which is that we talk about organization being necessary. The type of organization that we promote among our youth is the Mass Revolutionary Permanent Party, Pan Africanist Party. E por isso tem outros, criação de um sindicato, criação de uma sessão juvenil, por exemplo, já, e outras sessões juvenis que existem em outros partidos revolucionários a nível de África, e etc, etc. Então, só para concluir, então me estou falando de como há, subsídios tem, ensinamentos nos líderes de chá no E só questões da nós, como ser de juventude, não tomar atitude, para nos transformar, é a atual situação que o povo africano não atravessa. As I come to a conclusion in my brief remarks, I want to say that uh, that the ideas that our modern leaders have left behind for us must be followed, and that is when we say the mass revolutionary party, we don't don't just mean lip service, we don't just mean academic papers. We're talking about on a daily basis with the people. You have to have uh, structures in this mass revolutionary permanent party for every social layer of the people, <coughs> from the cradle to the grave, from the children, from the infants to the children, to the youth, like we have the youth wing of the PIDC. We have to coordinate this youth wing of the PIDC with the youth wing of the other revolutionary parties, pan-Africanist parties. We have to coordinate our UDIMU, the women's wing, with the women's wings of the revolutionary parties. We have to coordinate our workers' union with the workers' unions of the revolutionary parties in Africa. In other words, <coughs> all of the masses must be organized in the masses revolutionary party. Para terminar, podemos falar como África de jeito para o mundo. Está de hora de falar de como é justa, pedisse também para África da própria África. So as I close, I want to say that the Africa has given so much to the world that the world keeps on digging up all the resources of Africa and taking it all over the world. And now is the time for Africa to give for Africans. Para acabar o papel, eu não falo mais uma vez. Bom, muito obrigado. Yes. 
pelo menos que a mim tenha para falar sobre juventude e pan-africanismo. Certo, a nós que temos poder. Mas antes de não agir, quero dizer que o Solmanse não bate a lei um pensamento, um passagem, e qualquer que seja líder africano, quando começa a sair de casa, vai para fazer um trabalho na sociedade. Só assim que dentro da sociedade para que nós temos inserido nela, é não entende próprio como na verdade é juventude está determinado para transformar para aquele que seja o problema que o povo africano na travessia. Que é mentira. Eu tinha falado de como que o povo de Angola não passa. E mesmo o que não passa na Guiné Bissau. E mesmo o que não passa na África do Sul. Mas mesmo também o que não passa na Gana. Onde eu não tinha, não sei, não vai não vai passar. Não pega aqui no olho assim, lá de onde é que não mora, vai. Estamos dentro de Guiné Bissau, como nós estamos em termos de realidade. Para nós aqui mais necessitados. Para nós aqui que está um bocado mais ou menos direito. Para nós aqui que está direito. E esses que estão direito, eles que estão ali, é que estão ali. Que lhes sem dúvida, não precisa de tomar cuidado com eles. Se não quer ter o que é que E com a minha curma, ou a minha cara cabra, a cara lembra de cara um deles que é falece. Mas esse que é a minha palavra, um deles que vai me simplesmente incorporar. Bom, muito obrigado. <risos> So my final words is to say that we didn't come here to talk and to clap hands. We came here to coordinate with, uh, among ourselves, to coordinate the African Revolution. So we must give the example. Let's don't just talk, have talk shops, clap, 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 and go back and say the problem is there. The problem is with us. We have to give the example. Every single day, we must study. Study, study, and put it into practice, 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 create other study. When I came, when we arrived here yesterday, we walked down the streets. This is my first time being in Ghana. And walking down the streets, I felt like I was in Guinea Bissau. I saw the same contradictions. Mm -hmm. I saw, I, 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 I've heard it all the time that the problems of our people in Angola are the same as our problems in Angola. But now I really feel it. Because walking down the street, I saw those who are the poorest of the poor over here begging. And then I saw these big old mansions on the other side of the street. And I came to the conclusion on that side of the street. Okay, okay. okay we're talking about ourselves. Let me tell you what we're saying. Okay. We're saying there's a, there's a, a census going on right now. Uh -huh. In fact, the comrade who's the Secretary General of Jack is one of the comrades who's with this team. They're, using the, they're doing what they call biometric census, where they're using these tablets. They, you go there with your, with your card, your, your, your identity card, and they take a picture of your identity card. Youth on MPD has 2 million, about 700,000. So when you bring these parties together, you're talking about millions of people already organized in Africa, but they need to put their structure. Because we're trying. You know. Even uh, last week, some comrades from the play with some of the activists in PNC, they had their comments, we always send out comrades there, et cetera. All right. Uh, she wants to first of all thank you and praise you, especially the organizers of this uh, seminar. This is the first time that I had the opportunity, she has had the opportunity to uh, make a contribution here in the land of Kwame Krumah, Ghana. Porque este é esse ambiente, onde é que jovens está, não tem lembra aqui dizer de cabra e falar durante a luta de libertação. O Diano não pode crer e está a falar. As crianças são as flores da nossa luta e razão do nosso combate. Being here today with you, the youth of Africa, it reminds me of what Cabral used to tell us all the time when we were in Conakry together. I was a child then. He used to tell us all the time that you, the children, you, the youth of Africa, you are the flowers of our revolution and you are the reason that we fight. <laughs> Aquelas que não tomam parte da terra. Portanto, sem falar com eles, lembra, porque jovens são que estão acabam de estar na universidade. Ele falava com a mãe, educação e melhor arma para combater a ignorância. I was together with Cabral in Conakry, where they had the, the main headquarters of the PIDC. But I was in a school for children. The school that I was in was called the pilot school, where the uh, best students who came from the boarding colleges in the Liberated Zones would be sent to Conakry. 
the Costco Brown, and the PIG said, we must pay particular attention to this issue because they will be the ones who will be our political cadre that will help to transform our society. Because for Mill Cocker the gun was an instrument, but education is one of our main arms. A mim firma Lios, e graças a Bilcar Cabral, Bakwan Nkuruma, e mais dirigentes de África. A ver o que é que ainda falece. Porque a mim nunca apresenta bem. Não me completo e bilhão minha mãe também a fé. A minha engenheira de mecanização agrícola e licenciada em administração e gestão de empresa. Não agradeci de uma forma África completa para via se a revolução africana I started talking without pre pre uh, introducing myself because when I came here to the University of Ghana to see the youth here of Africa, I was moved and inspired. So I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Engineer Bulani Yama Nantama Yasi. I'm an engineer of mechanized agronomy. And then I got another degree in uh, human resource. No. Come on. Yeah, in the management of, uh, of enterprises. E... And I'm standing here thanks to Emil Kakabra and Kwame Nkrumah. I don't have to talk about the part of the part of the democracy. The democracy significa union democratic of the women. And the people of the people in a form of general e criado o dia 18 de junho de 1961 na República da Guiné-Conakry. The the organization that I have the privilege of leading is called Udimu. Udimu stands for the Demo the Union the, Dem the Democratic Union of Guinean Women. It was formed for Guinean women, but it was formed in Conakry, where the PIC was based, where Secretary was the president, and uh, it's the, the the women's wing of the PIC. It was founded on the 18th of June, 1961, in Canterbury. It was created by the people of Guinea in a general way. But, from 1994, with the creation of the system of the multi-partidarist, the Udemu was just in the PIGC. Other parties had to be organized by the people of Guinea. When Udemu was founded in 1961, of course, you know, Guinea-Bissau was colonized. And so it was founded for Guinean women. But after the PIDC took independence, it was a party state. There were no other organizations. But after we went to the phase of multipartyism, the Udemu only became the women's wing of the PIC alone, and other women started organizing other organizations, associations. The Udemu was part of the Union Pan-Africana of the Women, which was Guinea. Queria ser parte de ser o Demo na 61, para a Panafricanista de Mulheres, criado na 62, na Darsala. E a nós não faz parte direto dessa organização Panafricanista de Mulheres. So we talk about women in Panafricanism, we want you to know that when Udemo was founded in 1961, it was the women's organization that was organized the, the following year, in 1962, went to the first African Women's Conference in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, where they founded the Pan-African Women's, or Pan-Africanist Women's Organization, and Udemu still is a part of this Pan-Africanist Women's Organization. No papia vale de sistema capitalista, imperialista, Africa, não falava aqui de visão, Africa sufritiu na mão de estrangeiros. Se a nós, africanos, não a ter em conta que o branco faz no cano fila no mundo. Portanto, a nós que tem que se ver que é África. Será que é africano por o paneiro na África? Ou o não vive na África? Ou só por cabo e negro? Esse não tem que se ver. Tudo quem é africano e por que não tem nem na corção. Não luta para a África. Today we have been talking a lot about our enemies, imperialism, capitalism, neocolonialism, uh, foreign exploitation. We also have been talking about African identity. Who is an African? An African is not just because they color their skin, it's because of the consciousness that they have. Mm -hmm. If we keep on just re remember the, the, the things that our enemy has done, then we will never be able to get along with them in the world again. We have to talk about more about what we're gonna do to liberate ourselves from the enemy. Because to be an African means you have to work for Africa.
E tem uma pergunta para falar se contra a cultura africana na Cabocla Socialista. Família. A cultura africana nunca não é caporica. Somebody asked, would the African culture stop when we arrive at the uh, socialist system? No way. We would, African culture would never end with the establishment of socialism. On the contrary, it would develop. Cabral está falando com uma política que tem importante. Copia a parte positiva, vou aplicar com a realidade em Boteira. Portanto, cultura africana, o socialismo ainda, talvez está multiplicado. Imperialismo nunca é contribuído para a cultura africana formada. Cabral always taught us to learn in every aspect, from the books, from examples that people learn always, and we must learn, and not have a complex. If we say some people in other parts of the world are doing something that we can incorporate to our reality, we know we cannot import revolution, we can't export it. But if we see that other people are doing something positive that will work very well for our reality, then we must do it also. So we want to say, socialism, not only would it not end African culture, it will help African culture multiply. Imperialismo, aquele outro grupo, tudo aproveitando a cultura da África. É aproveitar o produto africano. É para transformar, é bem vendido. Mas uma nota nos jovens. Não falava já com uma cabra a falar. Educação e arma. Não tem a gente. Cabo não está na universidade. Africano decidiu desta vez por todas. É fácil não vai. Mas é bias. Africano decidiu para trabalhar esse continente e não na uni. Homens, mulheres, jovens, todo mundo do mundo era para a África. Imperialists and all of their gangster partners have always been exploiting Africa. But it's, we cannot get rid of imperialism by shouting or saying anything. We will only get rid of imperialism by organizing the masses of African people. And the most important social layer to bring about this victory is the youth. We're here at the university. It's the youth who must provide their energy, provide their sacrifices to make sure that our people's interests are protected so that they will stop exploiting our resources. Na Guinea Bissau, population de Guinea, mulheres mais tivas. E 52% de população de Guinea é mulheres. Portanto, se a nós não pega a peça na nossa terra, Tanzânia, Ghana, toda parte da África, não junta a Portanto, que é que o nome se fala que é Mr. Falakuma, presence of the Camara Feminine and the salary, the book. No aumenta, no quality of participation, intervention feminine, na cada país de Africa. We talked about youth and we're talking about women. Guinea Bissau, more than 52% of the population is women, and these women are active. But I'm looking around the room here today, and I see very few women. And so I want to uh, call attention to this and to strongly encourage you to bring the women, go to where the women are. It's the women's contribution to the revolution which will guarantee the victory of the revolution. Camarada, la mine falava com a onda, não saí na fila, não tinha conclusão com a africano cortado não calçou. Diferença que tem. Que eu não olhei na Guiné-Bissau, eu não olhei na Ghana, eu não olhei na... Na qualquer parte, africano, e um povo e um alguém. Portanto, nós juntamos no trabalho. Quando diz a mais estrangeiros, vem ocupar a terra. Basta. Comrade, like me mentioned to you all last night, when we arrived, we decided to walk around a little bit. And we came to the conclusion that Africans were split up from one and split up in different parts. We're all the same people. Africans, one people, one problem, and one objective. And we cannot elect uh, exploitation, continue no more. It's finished. We got to finish with it. Bom, para finalizar, não agradecer essa oportunidade por não contra. Mas, e bom não repetir várias vezes, mas nos diferentes países, para não poder copiar exemplo de cada país. As I close my few remarks today, I want to thank you again for this initiative of today, and would like to propose that it continues in different countries, different areas, so that we can get to know Africa, because we don't know Africa. We have to continue this work all over Africa. Okay, I mean, not to say, but not to say, not to say, 
Viva o PSDC! Viva! Viva o PSDC! Viva! Viva a República de Guiné-Bissau! Viva! Viva a República de Ghana! Viva! Viva o continente africano! Viva! Tomorrow, the 19th of September is the anniversary of the foundation of the PAI, the African Party of Independence, which is called PIDC now. Portanto, amanhã não há mistério uma pequena intervenção para não poder explicar parte do nosso partido. So we beg you tomorrow to let's have a little bit of time to have a, a special tribute to the PIDC, and we will send it to comrades of the PIDC to consider. Tomorrow on the 19th of Victoria. Oh, say victory is certain. Victoria is certain. Bapur Kanakaya. The ship won't get stuck. Bapur Kanakaya. Bapur Kanakaya. Bapur Kanakaya. Bapur Kanakaya. Luta. Victoria. Viva PIDC. Viva CPP. Viva PDG. Viva Frilimo. Viva Piola. Viva Swan. Isoleto! 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 This initiative is the initiative of Amir Kakabrao, of Kwame Nkrumah, a Sekotori, and many other faithful, immortal leaders of our revolution. Okay, obrigado. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So as I'm moving forward, uh, there are challenges that we have to uh, define, particularly in the context of the reality of a resurgency of counter-revolutionary in Latin America. Because if you have look at what is happening in Latin America, of recent, uh, which the incursions of uh, global imperialism in Venezuela, even in Brazil, that led to the jail of uh, Lula, it shows and said that there is a resurgence of that accident. And it means that our solidarity as African on a three continental level has to be reassembled. You see, because it was the height, you see, of a struggle against imperialism that you are what we call the three continental chain. So we cannot afford to be isolated. The challenge of a conference of this nature is how do we do that resurgence also at that level? That the struggle in Latin America, the struggle in Africa, the struggle in Asia, we must have that kind of a relinkage. It's very important. And that leads us to the context of the challenge of Africa cannot be free when a part of Africa is not free. The issue of Western Sahara. You see, we have to take the issue of Western Sahara just beyond the question of those resolutions. What are the things we can commonly do together on Western Sahara? So that we need that kind of united action on that. So that if just at this level we have five or six organizations that are represented here, and you have a united action. It shows a lot of impact in terms of what we can bring, the attention we can bring to be on that. So that is the first challenge at the level of combating imperialism. Because one of the lessons we have failed to learn, and which we must learn, is that imperialism, even in its most potent force, relied on the solidarity of its other members, like NATO and the others. When we are going to Libya, you see, you have to get a united, uh, uh, a united force, not a united nation resolution, but a united force. 
And that, that's one example. The second example, and the most critical, you see, our, we have been confronted by forces of globalization. Because the latest stage of it is neoliberal policy all over. Whether I want to talk in terms of privatization policies, <coughs> you want to talk of commercialization policies, trade policies, because this is where majority of the mass of the African people are affected. There is a need for an alternative. <coughs> because if you are going to mobilize people, you are going to mobilize them based on their practical reality. You cannot see an average Cuban speak for two minutes without mentioning the revolution. What is revolution? Those who have no education, revolution gives them education. Those who have no job, it gives them job. Those who have no hope, it gives them hope. Revolution is empty without addressing that material question that confronts the masses of Africa all over. So there must be an alternative. And what are the alternatives? And that's why the questions of an economic model become very important. Because if we have power in our various countries, how do you use that political power to rebuild? And we can solve that problem by getting this conference, whether the leadership, there's a need for a meeting, to come up with a clear economic model. You know, in the transition period in Cuba, Che Guevara come up with what we call the budgeting system, and it has its critical element. It was central to the development of the Cuban economy. He was just a surgeon, he was known as an economist, he became president, of the National Bank, Minister of Industries and others. But the critical element of it was the questions of planning, the question of organizing, the questions of uh, bookkeeping, the question of pricing. But these are elements we take little, but there are challenges that are going to confront us. So it is high time that you can't get up a model from which we can use as a mobilizing tool in our various countries. The fourth thing is also a political model. And the reason for it is simple. What has become of Angola? What has become of South Africa? Because these areas where we have history, you see, of serious liberation struggle. But who are those in control of political power in those places? Because we are involved in working people's organization in our own country. We are in the heat of the struggle in our own country. And one of the things we won't discuss at the strategic level here, because we are getting to the stage whereby we are going to go into mass political mobilization, even on the electoral election. Because it's not elections about money. It's elections on how we can rally the mass of the people. You see, on that idea. So, the context of political model also become important. Because in Nigeria, I can give you an example. The election will continue for the next 100 years. You cannot win except you struggle to change that model. And the reason is this. The election is monetized. So if you use the Western model, just like even in Ghana here too, is the Western model they are using. What do I mean by Western model? Is that majority of the populations have the right to vote, but not the right to be voted for. Because the right to be voted for is already taken away by monetized election. So when you say an election is credible, election cannot be credible where it cannot take nomination form. Because all the saving all his life cannot afford it. But that's the bourgeois democracy we are presented with. But if you have an election that is not monetized, election that is interest-based, <coughs> you see, you cannot say you want to contest that election. 
So the point I'm saying is that, not like what happened in the Cuban example of recent. You know, there was the election to National Assembly, there was a reform for them to have a new president. So yeah, well, I mean, I'll random. So I'm just making those suggestions that I'm just giving those examples that this conference need to come up with that political model. The last suggestions I want to make is that there is a need for a strategic sessions, you see, to appreciate the challenges of struggle in the countries where the organizations here come from. You see, we would have loved to want to go to Guinea-Bissau. Because we have certain experiences that uh, with the advantage of population. Where you have, if you go to Guinea-Bissau with just a population of less than two million, and go through around the country, we can sit down with come and say, come, we can make this suggestion to you. Yes. I'll discover a comrade this morning. Is there not a possibility to get it? of reevaluating the situation in an unfinished revolution in Guinea-Bissau. And it become an issue. You get it? These are challenges that we can take. If we want to go into electoral politics in our country, we want to discuss it, the context where we want to go. You see, so we are raising this from the point that the point of action ends forth should be one in which leadership of organizations can come together, let's approach it before we leave here, and see how we can address that situation. And that point now to the US. There's an African-American agenda. Even if you don't want to call it the African agenda, there must be an African agenda in the US, which you can all subscribe to. And I might comments give that classical examples. It's not a Bernard Sanders issue. It goes beyond that. Yes. There's a need for an African agenda. And we can create that agenda here. You see, so those are challenges that I want to push. So that when we are talking in terms of programs of action, these are things we can concretely uh, decide on. So because for some of us, you see, revolution is not that I want to make revolution in Nigeria. If Guinea besides the way to struggle, leave us, we go there. We find ourselves there. You see? It's a context of space. The thing is about context of spaces anywhere in Africa that it is possible. And that's the message we can get out of, uh, of this kind of uh, uh, conference. Beyond the other uh, ideological education, it must be a continuous thing. But there must be a balance, like we have it here. You can have clarity, but not have conviction to participate in it. But you must have clarity, you must have conviction, you must have commitment. And that discipline to go into it. So the revolution is a practical thing. Because the present people who are there cannot be relied on. There is a need for a revolutionary overthrow of all these leaders by any means that is going to be possible. You see, and as an African identity, you get it. What is the other thing we talk about change? You see? Why am I interested in struggle in Nigeria? The struggle is American, I find my way there. You can't struggle. That's the spirit you should promote now. If it's only one space you can hold, can say this is the only space that we can hold. Yeah. General Songo was with us for a very long time, still with us. Songo was one of those who fought their way out of whenever here. Yeah. When Nkrumah was being overthrown, you see, General Kasongo has 500 phone numbers in his head. We try to study him, we cannot understand him. He doesn't use any phone this year and go. He will call your number on your head. He said, he was the one that came with change to Congo among the Lumbis forces. So the point I'm just saying on that program of action is that let's just define those actions. Area that are not ready, those who are ready, let them join us so that we can move ahead. But you still need a strategic section you see, where the leadership or a committee of them must still come together after today before leaving here so that we can move forward.
Allo ta continua. Ijola sada. Alangio. Anoda challengeio. Anoda challengeio. Dogu dogu challengeio. Anoda challengeio. Anoda challengeio. Anoda challengeio. Dogu dogu challengeio. She said that the song that we were just singing is talking about the unity of Africa. Africans have to unify. Africa must be united. Right. So you're supposed to clap after that. We did. <laughs> so uh, just going. Uh, My name is Segundi Bulani Ndami. I'm from Guinea Bissau. Ever since last night and this morning, we've been talking about Africa, the problems of Africa, the exploration of Africa, the, the attempts to take away African identity. So I'm very proud to be here with you, and I would like to propose a final resolution to resolve the problems of Africa, to resolve the problems of African people. We have to join hands, to unite, to organize, to work together. To do this, we must have revolutionary consciousness. Without revolutionary consciousness, we won't resolve our problems. We will fall into conformism. Uh, let's just go and live along with it. You know, they got more power than us. Let me just provide for my belly and my family. E basta para nós próprios não lançar para não defender nossa causa justa. E qualquer lá, 
Nous avons pour nous désinvolver, nous avons pour nous tenir une solution rapide, nous avons un processus, pour bien que nous avons précisé le temps. Mais nous avons fait un processus. Quand nous avons dit que le propre objectif que nous stipulons dans la quinte conférence de panafricanisme, nous avons dit que nous avons un des points de vue, nous avons une session féminine. To do this, we must have action. And we must begin with ourselves and provide the example. We have to provide the example of our revolutionary consciousness in action. One of the points that we saw mentioned in the fifth Pan-Africanist Congress in 1945 talked about coordination among the women's wings of the revolutionary parties and women's organizations. So one of the resolutions that we propose today is that we uh, encourage comrades to bring tighter coordination among the women's wings of the revolutionary parties, revolutionary women's organizations, understanding the women is not a class, just like youth is not a class. We have women and youth in different classes. We want to bring together the revolutionary classes of women and youth. We want to have coordination. And I want to tell you that I'm very proud to be African. I heard somebody talking about identity, African identity here today. I'm clear on my identity. I'm proud of my African skin. I'm proud of my African culture. We all have African culture. We have different uses and customs that are different and norms, but we have <coughs> different levels of, of cultural development. Então, Bacala, na pedi mais força para não tentar trabalhar nesse sentido e muito obrigado. So, as I close, I want to encourage us all and beg for you, please, let us tighten up our coordination of actions and put in revolutionary conscious development. And I want to thank you so much and reinforce ourselves, give each other strength. <laughs> Primeiro, então, se fala boa tarde a todos, camaradas. Meu nome é Lamine Cissé, mas antes de não iniciar ainda essa pequena palavra que não me sei para ver, me sei saudar de quem grito ligar. E habitualmente sempre não está fazendo na Guiné-Bissau. A luta continua! A luta continua! A luta continua! Very quickly, my name is Comrade Lamine Cissé Jr. I'm a representative of the PIGC's youth wing, which is called the Emil Cockerbrow African Youth. And I, before I begin my, uh, my questions and my comments, I would like to start with our, our cry for the victory of our struggle, which is the struggle continues. Mr. Falam Bocado, sobre ideologia, sobre aquele parte que falado sobre direito internacional, e também um bocado sobre União Africana. I would like to talk a little bit about ideology that was uh, presented in this presentation that we just got through listening to. I would also like to talk about the relationship of uh, capitalism as it violates international law. And that's the ideology also. I want to talk about ideology as well. And don't back it up. Get a Mr. Rangania Palavra. Sing up as you do see the song. Before I say anything else, I would like to say two things that come from Amilcar, our immortal leader, Amilcar Cabral. Um bias é apontar quem que é. The one time they asked him, "Who are you?" Ele responde e fala de como ele é um simples africano. Yeah, he's referring to identity. He said when Cabral was asked, "Who are you?" He said, "I'm a simple African." Um simples africano que me está pagando se dívida. I'm a simple African who wants to pay my debt with African people. And 
e jovem. E o meu cocobra disse isso. Nós temos que repetir hoje porque a maioria dos camaradas aqui hoje são jovens, são jovens. Nós temos a obrigação de como S e a linha de pensamento que nós estudamos no livro de Sigma. As youth, this must be a line of thought that we must follow. That we are Africans and we must pay our debt to our African people. If I let you come up, or Jennifer Lado, the ideology, if I let you come up, ideology, it can simply define some the communism or socialism. When we talk about ideology, it's not just as simple as making a statement saying I'm a communist, I'm a socialist. It's not that simple, no. Ideology. E possível definir exatamente no momento certo o que é que eu vou mexer. Então, li também nessa conferência, não tem estado nesse certo tipo de ideologia. Eu vou definir exatamente o que é que o povo africano mexe. Porque li a África inteira o A ideologia must be dynamic. A ideologia must uh, always provide the correct path, the vision that we are going down as we want to uh, struggle to liberate our people from the oppressive forces. And in the moment exact, I'm going to talk about ideology. I'm going to talk about how not all the ideology of the African people is in the world of the African people. So as the mode of production is in the world of the African people. So as we define the ideological question, it must be based upon our reality, as our comrade said earlier, uh, when he quoted Emil Cockerbrow, that it must be linked up to our mode of production, which, which defines, which makes up, which is the force that makes our history go forward. The ideology comes from culture, which comes from our history, and our history is defined by the modes of production in the hands of African people. And don't tell us us in a moment to decide on the ideology, but not to define it again, the economic is exactly e para não mudar de produção, para não força produtiva, está na mão do povo e guiado para estados africanos, não para capitalista. So we talk about ideology in today's time. We have to talk about ideology that comes to liberate the modes of production, so that it's not the capitalist enemies that control our states and our people's resources, but African people who control these modes of production. As you know, this pensamento da América. Mas these are some of the thoughts of Emil Kapibara. Se vou analisar direito, eu tenho seguir raciocínio de como naquela mesma época, este mesmo tipo de pensamento também, eu tenho dirigido para não passar e vou para a minha turma e para a América do Sul. If you take your time to correctly analyze, you'll find that the same ideology that Mir Cabral defended and that we develop is the same ideology that Sajid von Kwame Nkrumah defined and we develop. E muito simples, se vou ler aquele livro. E eu saio com a minha turma, luta de classe na África, no capítulo sobre socialismo e revolução, é tudo do Noia. If you just even read this cursory, the class struggle in Africa, written by a Sancho of Kwame Nkrumah, particularly the chapter dealt with socialism, you see this, everything we're talking about today is identified there clearly. Então, essas e coisas que a nossa os não dê decidir, principalmente camada de juvenil, para mim é de quem? A nossa in the majority of our continent. This is the path that we youth in Africa must take. We're the majority in Africa. We're the future. We're the present. We must follow this path. I believe in the mode of production. Because it's very simple. It's going to pass here that no leader of the party that we're talking about today. Juventude, that can have the force to move to any place. America, and us, that have energy. We want to quote the president of our party, the PIDC. He didn't say his name, but I'll tell his name is Comrade Engineer Domingo Simos Pereira. He says all the time that it's the youth who must take the party into their hands to make sure that they provide all the solutions for our people. It's not for a few, but for our people. But for them, Bocado, so we need to international. It gets strange in your area of formation. Past 12 years, so no lay the right, principally the right to international. And with in reference to the issue of dealing with the uh, human international law as it applies to our situation, I want you to know this is not anything strange to me. I spent 12 years studying this area so that I can come and represent our people to properly implement and defend our interests. Dentro do dentro do próprio direito internacional, tem duas correntes: relativismo, relativismo cultural e universalismo cultural. In the uh, area of uh, international law, there are two different uh, branches. One is called uh, international relativism, and the other one is called. Can you come on? 
relativism cultural cultural relevance e universalismo and universalism no universalismo cultural está determinado de como sistema jurídico europeu é o que deve imperar sobre tudo do povo do mundo those who follow the, the branch of cultural relativism want to make what is, uh, have a Eurocentric perspective. They want to make the laws that are particular for Europe be universal for all of us. And so as a consequence, most of the societies in the world were dominated by this, uh, this racist relative, relative culturalism. In the past recent, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, El Kebim Bin Tarbaya, to introduce the rights social within the rights international. Not too long ago, our immortal leader Vladimir Lenin, and the uh, the leader of the revolution of uh, October 1917, came to give us another revolutionary perspective on international law. Na relativi no cultural ita vladi kuma cada sociedade cada povo tem que criar se normas juridas que na regi se sociedade mas minha grande pergunta e também disse o seguinte: se contra o atual sistema jurídico internacional, o tem estado a favor de povo de todos os outros países do mundo ou somente povos europeus, na ser foco de capitalismo. So Vladimir Lenin was clear. He said that when you talk about cultural relativism, that it must be interpreted properly and applied properly, meaning that each society has the right to define the laws that are appropriate to come from their culture. And so I would like to ask a question for you today. Ou se a nós também não iria fazer isso de maneira que o continente americano faz isso de maneira que a Ásia faz. Boa parte dos juristas até questiona seriamente sobre o atual estado de direito internacional. Porque vê que eles estão baseados com o direito, uma vez que é produto de história do povo. Então, cada sociedade tem que criar de ser. Na realidade, o atual sistema jurídico internacional. O atual sistema jurídico internacional. I was laughing because I asked them not to give too many concepts at the same time. So I'm all stuck, stuck, I'm trying to get I want to make sure I properly tell what he said. The question that he raises today is, in today's time, are we to apply cultural relativism, international law, from a Eurocentric perspective? Or should we follow the path that we see our comrades in Latin America are doing? that they are questioning and they are, are, are challenging these racist concepts that, uh, that a certain society or leaders of a certain, a small elite group of a certain society can impose their culture on us. E para fim, também aquele terceiro sobre a União Africana. A nós, pessoalmente, não acredita na eficiência the actual administration of the Union African. Okay, to finish the part that I left out, he also said now, going back to what we said again about Cabral, the culture is the fruit of a people's history, and history is moved forward by controlling the modes of production. Then, can we now say that we're going to let a small group of people control our modes of production and our culture? In reference to the issue, the question raised about the relevancy of some of these institutions that exist today, like the African Union or ECWAS, from our perspective, these are not instruments that will take us to unity of Africa, nor to the liberation of Africa, let alone to socialism. No, tem que ter courage para falar. Tem que mal estar ali, tem que papiar. Um exemplo claro é que aqui a França e a Líbia, a nós não quer gostar de qual que foi o posicionamento da União Africana. We have to be honest and put hit the, the nail on his say what really is reality. That, this, that we have to have courage to say these institutions don't represent it, they're not our instrument. Look at what happened in Libya. Huh? We're going to have people invade Libya and what could, what could the African Union do? Because the African people are not over there. the problem in Cusa is that the United States of America pronounce it. There is no document written in that sense, inclusive in public. É falar de como hoje eles ainda fazem que gasto militar lá para ter uma marca da África. É falar de como que gasto que não fazendo, porque que problema acaba primeiro coisa que não fazendo e para usar petróleo na Líbia para recuperar que dinheiro que gastado just to give you an example of some of the blatant uh, lack of respect that these uh, our enemy have against us, uh, I have a document I can share with you. Many of you might know already. 
that when the United States of America decided that they were going to lead an invasion of Libya, one of the things that they said was that they're going to invest money in the military invasion, but as soon as they kick the Jamaharia out of power in Libya, they will use the money from the oil resources to pay back that debt to them for uh, sending their military to invade Libya. And the African Union didn't take any position on that. At least we haven't seen it. To finish, I want to say thank you so much. Conferência deste tipo se tem que promover. These type of conferences must go on on a regular basis. E não tem pedido. Ora que vim a realizar futuros conferências de tipo que seja um bocado mais alargado. E moja tudo o país da África não o maior está lhe representado. E tem no companheiros africanos que vim de Estados Unidos, Canadá para vir para vir presenciar. Mas não tem pedido também na próxima. Uh, we want to thank you so much for your sacrifice and your efforts to bring us together. We see various societies of our African continent are here, as well as Africans who live in other parts of the world, such as Canada, United States of America. And we want to now uh, commit ourselves to help to enlarge this process so that we can in include Africans in Brazil, where he studied. But we not termina, not to start with the student. Because in Bahia, 55% of the population is yeah, Just to give an example, where I study, it's a place called Bahia in Brazil. 57% of the population of Bahia is Africans. Their thoughts are African thoughts. I missed their, I missed their presence here. If they were here, you could just see these are African brothers and sisters. Mais uma vez, enorme de Guiné Bissau e enorme da África, eu me falo hoje tudo. Bom, obrigado. As I terminate my uh, remarks here, I want to say thank, in the name of Guinea Bissau, in the name of Africa, thank you so much to all of you who are here. Oh, Viva right. Africa! Viva! Viva Socialism! Viva! Viva Pan Africanism! Viva! 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 Viva. <laughs> Pano,